So it's cooled down now and we can take a look at where we're at. We've got our basic shape in here. You can start to see how we've got a dip here, just about, and a dip there for that lame to go into and this one for the spolder to sit onto. And where we pushed that up to begin with, it's beginning to give us our uh, sh rough shape. Um, with the dip, the slight curvature there and the dip, we should get that sort of non-bloated uh, look of muscularity or hint of muscularity that we're after. It's a bit closed up at the moment, that'll be about that wide by the time we're done. Um, but I just wanted to offer it up quickly uh, to the arm that it's going to go with and just check where I am. Remember that the middle isn't the middle of this piece of work, it's not like that when it's done. Thereabouts is our middle line, so those edges there uh, on the lame and the rear brace just about meet and we can see we're a bit small which is kind of nice I prefer it that way if I'm honest uh, it makes it a lot simpler to uh, open these things up and get them to fit rather than trying to crush them down uh, to shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a bit of time just planishing and tidying this up um, and then we'll come back to it and see uh, how we're doing Keeping this curvature on the top here can be a bit difficult if you're working down onto the face of something like this. What will happen uh, more often than not is that you'll end up flattening it. You can do it, it just it's a bit hard work. So what I tend to do is I've got the stake over there with the slight recess and it's got a slight dip in its profile. And given that getting inside this with a hammer can prove difficult. Even with a long neck hammer, it can prove a bit tricky. Um, what I prefer to do is get the um, stake that I used at the beginning, uh, this beast, it's got a little bit of weight to it, and just use it on the inside. And that extra weight, that extra mass, gives it all the force that it needs. And if you get force is mass times acceleration. So uh, rather than trying to hit relatively fast with one of these which can just lead to that whole business of or aiming in with a long reach uh, planishing tool in there which is great to a point I found use one of these you can go slow and steady and the increased mass will planish things out nicely on the stake that is over there so as I explained early days this uh, tea steak or tea bar, whatever you want to call it, has got a slight, about two or three mil scallop shape that I've ground into this top bit. So it's sort of like that and like that. And it's perfect for these pieces. So I'll be using that on it uh, to keep that curvature there. And we should be able to pull out the look that we're after on this rear brace. So I'm about 10 or so minutes, uh, well, about 15 minutes into planishing and the rough shape is starting to come together. I can see that it's going to work, uh, that it's going to be okay. There's a few things I've got to sort out. This point here is higher this way uh, than the top, which I don't like. I don't want it to be like that. But that's just a couple of smacks just to get that sorted out. Um, we can see how we've got the scallopy shape there, this sort of dip there and there which we've still got to do some finishing work on but what I wanted to do was just check it 
uh, up against the arms that it's going to be against. Now I prefer, if I can, to make these narrower so the backs touch one another and then bring them out. Um, I find if I try and work the other way I get a bit lost. So what I would like to do is make sure the back there, which I've marked with this pen and on the inside too, goes vaguely into the middle uh, of the arm that I've got so far. And I can see there that's fairly good. Uh, if I have a look this side, try and make sure you guys can see what's going on too. Well, I can see there the back's touching. What that means is as long as the curvature is vaguely matching, it's just a bit narrower, I can pull that out and the whole thing uh, should come together quite nicely. So I'm going to get those uh, pulled out and just do a little bit more tidying up and then we'll look about attaching it to the uh, lame here. So I've just drilled the holes for the lame, which will marry up to our rear brace. Something like that. We've got a couple of sticking points, but that's all going to get cut out in a minute. Remember, when you drill your holes, try and keep them level. It's no good having one hole up there and then the other one cut down here. If you get them wrong, it's no big deal. You can see I've got one wrong there. Just sort of shown in one of the other videos. Shrink the hole back down redrill your hole and I'll probably just make that part of the slide for the sliding, uh, sliding rivet when we're done. So uh, what we do is just get that married up onto the back and when you do the rear brace what I've found is keep it in closed position. What I mean by that is easy to see on this. So that's the closed position and that's your open. Now when I do these lames I tend to keep them open at their fullest extent, but I found just through experience I guess and over the years I prefer to do the rear brace open, uh, sorry closed, so it's in this backwards position. It gets me away from all of these edges and bits here which I've got to tidy up yet. So get it on there, get it marked. We'll knock a hole in there and then in a minute we'll be cutting this vaguely like that. We'll be doing the same on this side because there is the bit that keeps on sticking and forcing it away. See, so if I'm there, you can see it's being pushed off, it's being pushed off by this bit, but that's all going to get trimmed. So I'll get that hole in, we'll get it married up, and we'll go from there. So we go, I've got my a uh, nut and bolt in there acting as my temporary rivet. I'm just going to figure out vaguely where this is going to go on the side. <coughs> Excuse me. So, like I say, stick it in that closed position. It's not going to sit nicely at the minute, but what I want to do, pushing it with my thumb here, is I want to make sure that when that's on there, it's not doing something weird like that. And it's at this oblique. I want to try and make sure that it's nice and square down the back here. Don't worry about what's going on in here, as long as it's not dreadful. So about there, get it nice and tight, push it against it and make a mark. Now my mark is there just at the uh, top of my thumb and what I'm doing is I just want to check that again my holes aren't like this, doing something weird where there's some angle down like that because then the arm will move in a peculiar way. We need to make sure that those two points are relatively square because they were on the pattern and I've got my hole there and somewhere on that line. So at the moment that's a bit low, I don't like that. He's a bit further down. So I'll just offer it up again, just try and figure out what's going on. Why it's doing it and if it's a big deal. And again it's just this bit of material here, look it's sticking into it, that's a bit round. So I'm just going to pull that out a bit and just shove that out of the way for the second. So what I've done is I've got this out of the way and pulled that out literally by just smacking that down. What that's done by being supported on a stake here is it's pulled that up and pushed that out of the way. And I can see already, this feels so much better, 
So get it in that closed position. Make sure it's reasonably square. Give a fresh mark. And have a look. And I'm a bit higher up now. I'm a bit happier with that. Um, so I'll get that drilled and we'll get this attached. So, let's do it without a break on the camera. See if I've got luck with me today. I might edit this bit out because I seem to be having real trouble with this screw. Not too tight. Get another one and see if it even fits. So that's good news, it fits. The holes line up. Nut and bolt on. Now, this won't be a good movement yet. A bit too loose. There you can see how we've got a close position there so the arm can extend back past itself and our lovely beginnings of a nice open there. I'm going to close all this down and get rid of this unsightly gap there, I don't like that. But that is how you make a closed, or soon to be closed when we put the door in, rear brace to sit. The right one on there. There we go. So I've got these ones where I've just ground the head off. Put them in that way because the wing interferes with them. But there is how we rough out some muscularity into our rear brace. Bit of shape in a minute that will change when I do the spolder. I'll do another film for that. And we'll close that down. And now hopefully no sliding rivets yet or anything like that to really ease the movement off. We'll just check that the proportions are 90% there. And we'll call that a day. Do it in one take. Saves me on the editing. It also shows if I've got half an idea of what's going on or not. So there we go. Reasonably nice close. A nice open. Once I've got all of this sort of stuff sorted out, should, like this one does, knock metal on metal, bigger than the person's movement. But there you go, that's how you attach a rear brace, or we'll make the rear brace and attach it in a bit of a rush to the arm harness. I'll give this a tidy and we'll do another film for how to attach the spoulders.